All right, guys, let's do this. What up? It's JoJo on the radio. This is the iHeartRadio countdown. Oh, my God. Gwen- what? 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 <laughs> Hi, Gwen Stefani. JoJo on the radio again. I can't believe I'm here. What? When's the last time I saw you? I don't know. Maybe. I feel like it felt like Chris, something to do with Christmas, maybe. Or I don't know. I, I, whatever it is. I feel like we were on that side of the building somehow in a small room. Yeah, you may be right. Well, I missed you. I that I think the world, my family, lo- everybody loves you, Gwen. Oh, thank you. Can you feel the buzz when you walk around the building? Like, is that Gwen's time? I was gonna, about ready to walk into the building, and I was like, I can't believe I get to walk into this building. Like, everybody that has music, even if you didn't do music, would want to be in this building. Like, this is this is the radio, guys. Like, this is crazy. And I didn't expect even to have the song out or any of this. I mean, it's just been, I think that's my favorite when you don't know what's coming. We don't know what's coming next, but this was really unexpected <laughs> well, what, and I what, love it. Are we working on album albums? I mean, maybe you can't say maybe it's top secret. There's no secrets with me. I, I'm like hard on my sleeve, but like I've been working on music since 2020. <laughs> uh, you can tell I'm in a rush. Um, <laughs> I've been, I just kind of went down this path. I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make this reggae record. Like I, I had like this vision because Kelly's getting so much airplay today, but Kelly Clarkson is really (laughs) the reason she made me so jealous during 2020. She was sending me all these demos of things that she was writing. And I'm like sitting there cleaning toilets and doing homeschool. And like, we're in quarantine, you know, in Oklahoma with my boys. And I was like, how am I, how are you doing this? Like, she's like, Oh, I just stay up all night and I just write. And I'm like, what? Like, like what, what? Who are you? (laughs) Energizer bunny. And, um, so that kind of got me thinking about writing and, and then I wrote all this stuff and it just, I loved it, but it wasn't really, it didn't have that thing, that thing that made me want to listen, like listen over and over again until I wrote Purple Irises. And I went in the studio with this young girl called Nico, who is actually, her mom grew up on No Doubt. So she's like in her twenties, she had written True Babe, but we had never really written in the same room together. And these guys from Sweden, Jack and Coke, they had also written on True Babe. And so uh, we were in the studio together and I don't know, I was praying and praying on the way to the studio, feeling like kind of like insecure, like I'm going to go in these with these guys. And what if I don't like come with something today? Like, because you never know. Music is so spiritual and so like it just comes and it's like it's not really up to you. You know, you can have so many intentions or ideas or but to me, like it's like they just it just comes. It's, it's so incredible when it's written when it happens and you want to like rewind and like watch it back how it happened because it's so magical i've been told it's almost like spiritual like it's, like like you're writing spiritual. it but it's, all, it's like you write it but it's almost like not you writing it comes yes, from above is it, that it, one for me 100 percent. like i was on you know the 101 freeway i got off i turned on orange grove street or whatever the <laughs> studio's on and i was about ready to pull in and i had been praying like the entire way and like I purple irises came to me just like that. And I just like the, the title. So I just put it in my phone and pulled into the driveway. And then we started writing the song and I kind of forgot about it. And then all of a sudden I was like, no, I got the title. And I, I, I looked at my phone cause I had forgotten. And then it, we wrote the song and then we just sat back and like, I have a video of us, like just our eyes are shut and we're just like listening to the song going, Oh, like we had the song now. And it doesn't even really like, matter if anyone hears it because we have this song like it's just really crazy amazing feeling but now that it's on the radio i'm like ah this is so cool what a rush the, it is a rush yes I, I talked to ed sheer and i'm like what do you get what what makes you most excited about you know uh what you do is it and i, I assumed he was going to say on stage which is very exciting to be on stage he goes no i get really excited when you have when you find that song and you think what could it become yeah that was, it's a hope it's a hope and i, I think that's this whole like song is about that. It's, I feel like when you talk about like me and Blake are huge gardeners together. <laughs> Sounds so, <laughs> so, so not We're what so I'm, cool. <laughs> so, such rock stars in the garden. <laughs> no, because he's like, he's Oklahoma and he does like a, like he does a, like a lot of stuff on the ranch. Like he's suit, his tractor, like he's a tractor guy. Like he's, he's a the cow real, he, boy. Like number one is that for him. Like, and it's so authentic and real to him. So I would watch him like plant these huge, fields of like alfalfa for the animals and like i mean he and he's like, like it, he's learning i'm learning so one year i had him i forced him to do flowers and because i love flowers and so we did that and now we're doing like large scale like fields of flowers 
So during 2020, we were all there and we were on this like kind of recce going through the the ranch and we had all the kids and we came across this old abandoned, like hundred year old building that had like been falling to the ground. And it was like a homestead from like back in the cowboy days and around it was all these purple irises. And we were like, whoa, these must have been planted like a hundred years ago. Like, and so we all started pulling them out and we were going to transplant them over where we were living at this lodge. And so all the kids were doing, I have a video of us doing it. And um, we planted them and it was just like another project to do to fill the day. And years later, they're like blooming. And I feel like it's such an unbelievable like metaphor to our love. Like this it's thing like, is, it, this song was meant to happen. I know, but it was like so, it's so true to like um, our life and our love and how like, of course you have this hope the whole time that you're going to get this bloom, but it's always going to fade. You know what I mean? It's right. always, but it can come back. And like, I think that the insecure part of love is like, um, I don't know. It's always going to have, you're always going to have to weather the storm. You know what I mean? And these irises are crazy out there in Oklahoma because they go through so much. It's such crazy weather there. And it's like, and I just feel like it just was such a great way to represent like love, you know, and hope and, you know, in the song, it's one of those things where I don't think I really thought of those things through until the song was done and it spoke back to me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh, this song. And again, it wasn't supposed to be with Blake. I wrote the song about Blake and then Blake heard it and he loved the song. And then I just like I got this feeling that maybe he would might want to be part of it, but I would never dare ask him because I'm not going to be like, you want to my song? Like, you... Why wouldn't you? Because it's weird. It's no, like it's not, is it? I've been on his songs, but like he's like. <laughs> like country guy. <laughs> you know, like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> like it would just be like weird, <laughs> but he, he can't, he ended up doing it. I texted him and like in 20 minutes he came to the studio and he sang on it. And, he, and it's just, it was just like one of those things where I can't believe it. I can't believe he's on it. I can't believe that we got it. Like we ended up recording it in Nashville. Um, and it all came together in like a really like quick, weird thing because this, producer called Scott Hendricks. It's actually Blake's producer. He's like, he's a, he's like a master. Like this guy has had like a hundred number one radio hits in country music. Good he's, God. he's like one of those guys that like, he's like this quirky, weird, like, I don't know, scientist of music. Like I love him so much, but he could never work with me because he was basically working for Warner brothers. And it was just a whole thing. Anyways, four days after he retired, he ended up cutting purple irises in Nashville with a live band with amazing musicians and it was on Iris Street. And it was just a coincidence. It. it was just a coincidence. I swear. What? I swear. And if You're you don't believe me, now. my brother was there and he was filming. <laughs> and so I have it on film. It's on Iris Street? Good guy. <laughs> Isn't this, that crazy? This song was meant to happen. Well, a lot of people in Nashville will know there are a lot of studios on Iris Street, but oh. I had no idea. It's still, like, still, <laughs> still. Gwen, uh, we'll play Purple Irises in a couple minutes here. But yeah, I've met Blake. You talk talking about Blake. I've met Blake maybe two or three times, and every time he's just I'm howling, laughing. Is he the funniest dude? Just give me a quick, you know, back, give me a Blake story. What is he oh my like? Gosh, he is every day, every single day. It's something, and it's always like <laughs> when you least expect it. Like he'll just come with those one liners, and you just you're just laughing so hard. <laughs> and it's like I can remember when we first met each other, and we were both like going through horrible times in our lives. And I remember I was like, okay, you need to make me laugh. Like he was like, Oh, that's going to be a talk. Cause we were both like dying. Right. But I was like, I just, was it on the voice right around that time? Is that yeah. When, yeah. Okay. And we were both going through a lot and like he, he just is so good at doing that. I remember, well, even just the other day when we were on Jimmy Kimmel and he had like this skit to do and he's just like, he's electric. Like he just knows how to turn this thing on and make everybody just die laughing. <laughs> and it's such the greatest thing to be married to. Cause it's like, you never, you never get, you just never get bored. Cause he always has something to say. Well, I love him too. So tell him, <laughs> I, I tell him, him Jojo too. loves him. Right. We uh, all love you, Blakey. No doubt is for Coachella getting back together. <laughs> the world stopped. Everybody's jaws dropped. We couldn't be more excited. What made this happen? Oh my gosh. It was again, one of those things out of the blue, just all of a sudden it was like, it was the time we were going to do it. Who knew? Like we're there now. Like it was always probably going to happen. I don't know about Coachella, but just, we were going to do a show again together, I'm sure. And it was just, it was just, this is the year, you know? And, um, I think the most exciting part is just hearing how excited everybody is about it. It's getting me so hyped up. I can't wait to slap around everybody. I'm just going to be like, (laughs) it's just, it reminds me, we had such like 
we were in a band together for like nine years before Just a Girl got on the radio, right? Oh, wow. So, okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Yes. And we like we got so cocky like about our like live show because we were just we were so like um determined not to make it, but just to be great live and like we would just get out there and just be like, Rah! like no matter what you are going to have fun. And like, I know that when we get up there and it's Coachella and it has that energy of like, oh, you yeah. know, West coast, like no doubt, like it just, it's going to be, it's going to be incredible. I, I'm getting so hyped up about it. And now I got to go back and like, listen to no doubt songs and like learn them again. Oh my God. I, I, I was told, I was talking to your manager and uh, I was told that, um, for you, it's going to be like getting back on a on a bike. I think so. I think it's going to be like that because it is kind of like that every time I get on stage. Like, because you have these like pauses and then you're like a mom and like you're doing all your other stuff. And then it's like, okay, now you're expected to just hop on stage and like do, Don't that, rock the do, that, do that thing. And, <laughs> right. and, and it happens. It really does. And it, a lot of times like I'll be in a sound check and I'll be like, oh, I'll be like, I can't believe I have to do that. And then I'll get and I'll be like, oh, here it is again. Like it just it just happens. You know what I'm saying? And. It's going to be like with that with those guys, but it's going to be even more intense because it's going to be like, I'm going to be looking at them on stage going, how? How is this 2024? And we're like staring at each other, looking out at Coachella. <laughs> like, and we are I, again. I, I, it's going to be so epic. I can't wait. We're, I, well, I speak for, I, I you know, sometimes I say I can't speak for everyone. Mm-hmm. I am speaking for everyone. We are all through the roof. Cannot <laughs> wait. Gwen, I, I was told about a story. Please tell it. It's something about you in the car, <laughs> speakerphone, Eminem is talking. Oh, <laughs> and I, I, that's all I really know. I need to okay. hear this story. Um, well, I got I got a call saying that Eminem wants me to hop on one of his songs, which is could you imagine getting that call? Like the great, like I'm like a, such a super fan of him. Like, and they said to me that he's going to be calling you like in the next couple of days. And um, here I am. I had just bought like this. I had my third baby, so I needed to get a car that like they could get in their own car seats because I had the baby and all of that. So I bought an Odyssey, which is like those like soccer mom, like cars that like the the door opens or whatever. So I'm like, Uh, I'm rolling in that. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And I have the kids all in the car and I'm literally going to soccer practice, like literally taking them like soccer mom. And here comes on the, in the car, a phone. I answer it. It's like, it's, it's Eminem. Right. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I was like, hey, just FYI, the kids are in the car. (laughs) Like, I don't know what he's going to say or how he's going to talk. You know what I mean? And I was like, just it was just such a surreal moment to think like I'm like soccer mom and I'm talking to Eminem. And, you know, afterward, I was like, I I was just so like blown away to be talking to him. But it was just surreal on Mulholland driving like in this odyssey like going to soccer <laughs> I don't know it's not that it seems so, it seems so crazy like, you know, I see that I pictured this line of uh, soccer moms because we I, I'm a dance dad it's the same kind of the same thing yeah and you saw all this line of soccer moms and you're the only one with Eminem calling them <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh my god it was uh, so cool well Gwen I have uh, a bit of a mystery I want to throw at you I don't know if you know anything about this but I, it's it's I, I've gone down a rabbit hole and trying to figure this out years ago you basically loaned, to my understanding, uh, a, the, your red dress from Tragic Kingdom yep. to uh, a museum. I think it was maybe the Hard Rock or whatever. To my, according to these stories, that dress eventually went to a museum in uh, Fullerton, I believe. Yep. In 2005, and I know it's an old story. In 2005, <laughs> this dress was stolen yep. from the museum. To my understanding, once again, I say it again, I don't know for sure. The, these two people had backpacks on. The belief is one was like a lookout. The other one hopped this five foot or so plexiglass wall, took the dress off a mannequin, put it in the backpack. They took off and the dress and I have searched. The dress has never been seen again unless you have other information. What do you know about this? I didn't know uh, the last part of the story that they had a back. I didn't know the backpack thing, but I did know that that dress did get stolen. And what's so crazy about that dress is I bought that dress at some mall and some like contempo casuals or something, <laughs> who knows? Like, and I wore, cause I wore the dress. I wore it. I think I wore it when we played, um, like it was like grad night at Disneyland or oh, something. Wow. <laughs> and then, and people at that thing, they would be like, they were at grad night and we were playing it and people thought we were like a fake no doubt cover band. Cause they were like, why would they be playing grad night? Like, and we did it like seven nights in a row or something. <laughs> <laughs> and like at Disneyland, it was so cool. They had these like weird, these, I, I'll never forget the little like sandwiches they made for us backstage. But, um, and then I also wore the dress. This is before it was on. I, I can't, yeah. Tragic King was out and I wore it on stage 
playing with um with Sublime. Oh wow! And it was okay. when basically I think I went out to play with Sublime, and I was wearing that dress, and Louis Dog, uh, Bradley's dog, came up and like bit me, bit the dress. So then I had to sew like this sequence like heart on the bottom where the hole was. So. Yeah, oh. so that dress was like not just only on the cover, and it the chances that that I would have worn that on the cover, like it was just one of those dresses I just had in the closet. It's same with the Don't Speak dress. I had that polka dot dress for like years, and literally showed up to the video. I was like, oh, I think I'm just gonna throw this one on. Like and now they become these famous. It's so iconic, weird, you know? yeah. And like the Don't Speak dress was like, um, I, I even had like the first time I ever had like a stylist there, and I just like pulled that one. I was I'm gonna wear this, you know, and. I bought it on Melrose, like it's some thrift store. It was like it's some 1930s dress I probably got for like ten dollars. And <laughs> this is okay. I am on a mission. I, I mean, I'll probably never find it, but I need to. I mean, if anybody knows where this dress yes, is at, yes, exactly. No, yeah, no questions asked, right? Just get the dress back to you somehow, or to the museum, or whatever. I'm good. Like whoever really needed that dress, you're. I'm never gonna wear it, so it's fine. But like... I would love to know. I, 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 I'm a, it, my conspiracy brain's already going. I got to figure this out. <laughs> Message to your fans. You got the OG, no doubt, fans from back in the day that have stuck with you. You've got the new fans, probably some country fans coming in from Blake, you know, and message to all these people who just absolutely adore you. Oh my gosh, you guys, like what? Like this exchange of love we got going on. Like it just never gets old. And honestly, like... I feel so inspired by this this invisible group of people that have been loving me. Like I love them so much and they inspire me so much and it's incredible. Like it's it's incredible. Thank you for listening. Thank you for loving. And it just I don't know, it's hard to even to think of something to say because it's so out of like my mind of like how this could have happened to me is just incredible. It's incredible. What what else do people need to know about Gwen Stefani? Gwen Stefani. Well, you know, I got purple irises, but I had been working on a, you know, a whole record, which will eventually come out. I'm super excited to share that. And, you know, that that's probably like the next phase, right? I mean, putting out a record, which yeah. is just super, never gets old. <laughs> it's very exciting. Tour maybe along with that or. Yeah. I haven't really talked about touring. I At this point in my life, I've kind of been, um, I don't know. I have a lot of kids, so. <laughs> Bring like, the whole family. Let's do I'm it. trying to enjoy that the the kid part. You know what I mean. I don't want right. to be away. So we'll see. We'll just you know you can never predict what's going to happen next. I so have proof true. of that. <laughs> All right, hey Gwen, thank you for hanging out. Thank you, thank you. I love you. I love you. At the end of every interview, Gwen fist bump to make it official. Yes, Give me a little. <laughs>